Okay guys, here we are with John Medved, the CEO of Outcrowd from Jerusalem, Israel. He's got a lot of experience in funding startups and doing some exits out of them. So we will talk about that. So Good welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Bueno in Chile. <laughs> yeah. And you will be, you will be welcome always here. Mm. Siempre. So, amigo. We've aggregated about $750 million dollars of capital. We've funded 160 startups. And I'm proud to say we've had 21 exits wow, so that's far. Wow, that's great. Thank God. That's what we want. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, we want to learn. Here's to exits. <laughs> <laughs> you know, really, first of all, congratulations on this great idea for a conference. I don't know of another conference anywhere in the world that is about exits. Yeah, and, and that's really important and good for you here in Chile for and, doing this. And the this. name of it, the exit day. The exit day. <laughs> well, I hope that I'm able to participate in future exit days in person. You will be invited. Okay, thank that's you. That's for sure. We invest in companies um, that are in a variety of sectors, we would call sector agnostic, meaning that we'll invest yeah. in cybersecurity and medical devices and agriculture, drones, Video games, games. yeah, we, we yeah. had a, actually a great uh, one of our companies called uh, Nextpeer was bought by Rakuten in, wow. you know, was doing multiplayer game platform. So, you know, we're, we, we, we invest in every area and we also invest in every stage. So we do oh. seed funding all the way up to pre IPO funding. Wow. So, you know, we've invested in companies like Insight Tech which was uh, a $150 million dollar funding round led by the Koch brothers. This company, by the way, is an amazing company. It helps cure Parkinson's tremor. It basically stops a Parkinson's person from having tremor and it does it with focused ultrasound. It's almost like and Star it's, Trek. It's a, an Israeli technology. It's an Israeli technology um, and really spectacular company. And we also do early stage. So we were the seed investors in a company called Zebra Medical, which does AI-driven analysis of radiological images. So if you want to understand an MRI or a CT, the AI does it. We provided the first $500,000 of seed funding. And we just recently participated in their $30 million dollar round together with Johnson and Johnson. We're almost doing a deal a week. A deal a week? Wow. Okay, so 50. Yeah, but, they, year, more or yeah less. but they basically are all curated, right? In other words, what's different from us and standard crowdfunding is the sort of standard crowdfunding says, you know what, let the crowd decide in its infinite wisdom. This is serious business. This is venture capital. We have a very large team, about 170 people, who are working today in 11 offices around the world, three in Israel, eight in every continent. And the origin of our crowd is in Jerusalem or it's, is in it's in Jerusalem oh wow it's my hometown when did it five happen? years ago five five years ago yeah but but you are you have a lot of experience in I've, the venture I've capital been, industry a, uh, uh, more than five years yes <laughs> yes <laughs> take a look at my beard that's more than five years <laughs> no I've, I've been in the business for three decades And, Three decades. Um, and where? Also in Israel? In or? Israel. I mean, uh, I, I've built... Always. Uh, always in Israel. I've built, I grew up in the States, moved to Israel as a young romantic kid. I love the hummus. I love the women. I love the culture. I love the history. I love the future. You know, Israel is an amazing place. It is but you're a Jewish. Yes. Yeah? yeah. I mean, I grew up in a Jewish family, but I wasn't really knowledgeable or didn't have any traditional education and I came to Israel as a college student, like a mochilero, you know, wow. and uh, I, I, I really fell in love with the place. Every year we have the Our Crowd Global Investor When? Summit, March. March 7th, March, March okay. 7th this coming year, 2019. <laughs> There, last year we had 10,000 people registered. Wow. We will have about 15,000 this year. Most of them come from around the world. I mean, that literally they're coming from every country. There'll be hundreds of startups, hundreds of multinationals. It's really a, a great, and we'd love to have you talk about what's going on. I think in I Chile. should go. I think you should too. <laughs>
We, we have also another event here in Chile of Magical Startups. It's every January. And the first time, four, four years ago, we had uh, 200 people. The last time this year, January, we had 1.3 uh, thousand. That's yeah. great. Look, today, everybody needs, going. everybody needs innovation. You know, we were yeah. talking before about what you do with your uh, and the people who, who in spiral. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's so true that corporations today are treating innovation in a different way. It used to be that they would pay lip service, right? Yeah, sure, we're into innovation. No more lip service anymore. People are dead serious. They realize that their business is being disrupted. They badly need it. They, it's life or death. It's okay, if you, it's either innovate or die. It happened in the first, in we, the we, first we, year. We, we, look, we, we, we have so many companies, we have 160 companies. So 21 exits is good, but we, you know, we need more. <laughs> we, we had a really good month from April 9th to uh, May 9th this, this year. We had three exits in one month, which <laughs> congrats. <laughs> <laughs> we sold and they were good exits. We had, uh, first we started off by having Jump, which is a bike sharing yeah. company in New York. We invest, by the way, not just in Israel, we invest all over the world. And so uh, Jump was bought by Uber for $200 million. Wow. And then uh, the next day, Nike bought our company in Vertex. And Vertex does foot selfies to give you a 3D model of your foot. So Nike wants it to, you know, really so, make good so shoes. You you did it global in the first year. Yeah, we were, so we've always been global. Look, you went global. It, it, Israel is always about going global. We have no market. We're too yeah. small. Yeah. And so Israeli entrepreneurs immediately understand that it's go global or go nowhere. And that's, a, it turned out, you know, we have a whole history in our people of turning curses into blessings, okay? Um, we had no water in Israel, so we became experts in water handling. Today, the best irrigation technology. And it turns out that we have no market. That's a curse, right? No, yeah. it's a blessing. It's a blessing. It teaches you that you've got to go out and conquer the world, otherwise you're not going to build your startup right. Too many resources. It's not a good it's idea. Lazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And lazy. So, you can be all kinds of things in startups. You can't be lazy. If you're lazy, sorry, find another business. And uh, uh, when you make some funding, you begin talking about exit in the beginning, or it just okay, happens? That's in, in, you know, that's, a, that's, that's a really good question. We always want to know what the exit potential is. So when we're interviewing a startup, we ask them, okay, dream now, who's buying you? At what point are you going public? I mean, look, exits, the best exits, a public offering. Yeah, Unfor the IPO. Yeah, and, yeah. and we've had some already, we've had two, two. okay? And uh, we like to hope that we're gonna have a lot more, but the majority of our companies go public through an M&A. And so we ask them, say, who's buying you? Because you, you need to know that, and if, if they can't come up so the answers, it's in the beginning of the conversation. Yeah, I oh mean, yeah, no? big time. Now, the problem is we don't build enough for exit. Because that, that, traditionally in venture capital, you basically say, look, build the company and the exit takes care of itself. And I'm not sure that's true. Because today, there's so much innovation out there. So many startups, they're all competing for mind share and attention of the multinationals or the guys who are the buyers. You have to be thinking strategically about that. I think uh, the CEO of the startup should be, be very focused on growing and make it well with the product and, and the, the business. marketing yeah, and the I business. Mean, right. and, and the it, exit will take care of itself. Yeah, but, but I think uh, someone must be taking care of the exit the possibility, the building the exit condition, no? Yeah, I think, and I, by the way, the way to do that is through partnerships. And a lot of startups and companies talk about partnerships, they don't really understand what a partnership is. And they think that a partnership is get a big check from a company right away, get a press release out, and they don't realize that your first win with a big company is just the beginning. Because you can either you know, drive a lot more revenue. You can become a, they can become a reference account 
Yeah. Or they can become an exit. Have you heard about corner shop from Chile? I it's, have not. not no? Yet. No. It's a um, solution for uh, freeing you from going to the supermarket going shop. No? Okay. They shop for you and they bring to you whatever you want from your application in your iPhone or whatever. Uh, they have built a partnership with Walmart oh, here great. in Chile. They are about to make an exit of $200 million with Walmart, but they wow. have make it well. They have focused on doing the partnership and doing it well and making good deals for that's, Walmart also. I think that's the secret. Yeah. I, really, I really think that if people look at this like they would a personal relationship. I mean, personal relationships have to work on both sides. It's not just about the little company getting orders and money. You have to make sure that you understand the needs of the big company and what they what really drives them in this relationship. A lot of times today, the exit is because they want a product, because they want a team. And it's a aqui hiring. Yeah. Because they hire There's always an element of that yeah. somewhere in there. They but, hire people. You know, very look, only the very biggest exits are because of revenues. Right, because they've already, you know, they need to, they look at this in a financial, uh, uh, you know, uh, manner. Most of the times it's more strategic and about product expansion or market expansion yeah. or team expansion. But I think that we are, we are really, um, we're, at, we're at a place now in the innovation history where it's never been better to be an entrepreneur. Right. In other words, if you anyone never who's, in the whole history, history of humanity. Never. No, absolutely. Yeah. I, because I'm first convinced of all, about all that. of the tools are in front of you. Okay. Yeah. Today, you don't need to buy software. You can, you know, the whole get it. world is yours. You know, yeah, you can get the software for yeah. free. It's called open source. You don't need to buy servers. You yeah. rent them. Yeah. Okay. You Cloud services. You know, whatever. you don't need to hire a team. Yeah. You rent that too, or you you know, crowdsource it, okay? You don't need, you know, it, it's so much is th there, ready for you, okay? Whether it's the on-demand economy, it's every, you know, it's just all there. So if you're sitting and saying, you know, I gotta think about when I'm gonna start my startup, don't think, get off your behind and make it happen today. Do because it. it's not gonna be yeah. better. This yeah. time is the best it's ever been. And I think if you look, at what's going to happen over the next 10 or 20 years, it's only going to get better. I mean, a lot of people think, well, it's going to end and there's going to be another bubble bursting. We haven't even begun to see the beginning of what's happening with AI and robotics and autonomous driving and precision agriculture. Just the beginning. It's just the beginning. Once there's a relationship starting, our job is to sit with the the young entrepreneur often and understand what he's trying to get done because sometimes they get into a problem where there's a communication difficulty where the entrepreneur just you know doesn't get it why aren't they happy i delivered the product well it doesn't work perfectly but big deal okay you know you have to sort of translate for them that this is a business critical application and it's not like it sort of works it either works perfectly or it doesn't Okay, you have to make it, you know, work right. And once you, you know, once you're in that exit discussion, we have a lot more expertise in terms of how to bridge gaps because maybe there's a valuation bridge yeah, where you can. You have done it a lot of times. A lot of times. And then and we've, we've they seen, and they, and they, by the way, the 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 acquirer wants to see that the company is well backed and the company is well supported. Yeah. One of the mistakes a lot of small companies make is finally someone says, I'll buy you for $10 million. And you're so happy because, you know, all you've invested is a million dollars. And when you say, okay, <laughs> are you sure you don't want to pay me 12? No, I'll pay you 10. Okay, I'm done. And no one ever asked the other three or four buyers. No one even picked up the phone or sent them an email. So our role, it's about networking. Uh, one, to one guy told me it's about the verb is networking and not net sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the happy networking Thank you. and great exit. Thanks. Thank you, John. A pleasure. Great. Thank you. We'll see, we'll see you soon. Okay.
Good to-